uh, always an exciting day, exciting day. Uh, first one here at Michigan State. Uh, a lot of work went into it. I want to thank really the staff, the recruiting staff over these three weeks. Things have been moving fast. Really impressed with the uh, coordination uh, and really the work ethic, work ethic, long hours, all of that. So I can't thank this staff enough. Um, really excited about the group that we uh, currently today, two o'clock, got uh, signed up, um, and then. Uh, Looking forward to continue to build this roster over the next few months and even all the way into the summer, but this is a great, great start. Kind of wanted to talk about a little bit how we got here. Three weeks ago, um, arrived, uh, excited to meet the, the team with my first team meeting on that Monday, and then dove, dove into the current roster, trying to grow some relationship there, learn what we have on the roster, positionally, age-wise, things of that nature. And that mindset really hadn't changed over the last, last three weeks. First day, I was able to get out on the road with coaches and travel with the greater area of Detroit. A bunch of good-looking uh, players enjoyed meeting high school coaches around that city. Nick Marsh on day one, being able to see him, meet mom. Um, that's how we attacked the first day that Friday out. And then really the next week, it still was back to the current roster. Spent a lot of the mornings meeting individually with our current roster players and learning, uh, getting to know them, and then traveled late afternoon and evenings to home visits throughout that first week. All at the same time, trying to hire a defensive coordinator. Uh, brought six coaches over here with me that got deep trust and knowledge of, but a huge piece of this was the defensive coordinator. A lot of phone calls, uh, talking to a lot of people interested in the job, continued to uh, circle back to Joe Rossi. Couldn't be more excited about adding him in the middle of this process over three weeks. Um, and then he dove right into it on the, on the recruiting side, helping us get to the finish line. Had huge weekends. Really only had two, two at the uh, total that um, we, we put together the last one. I think we had close to 20 guys come through on a three-day span that last weekend. That's going back to, again, thanking the staff and their approach uh, going, going through this. On this signing class, we are excited. It's heavy on the high school side, which is going to be an emphasis for us, starting um, really up front, the offensive line, well represented in this crew. Uh, important to get a couple of quarterbacks, feel awesome about Alessio and, and Ryland coming on board, continue to you know build in the secondary side. So, and we're not done. I mean, this thing, you can, this landscape now, with college football, you can add to your roster 365 days a year. Uh, we're in the midst of the portal being open. And so there's opportunities there as well. Uh, visits early in January. We've got a second signing date in February that we're going to attack. At the same time, the portal will open again in April. Feel confident we'll continue to add to the roster throughout the, the year. But back to this day, first day starting, signing day. Feel awesome about these group of young men we're bringing in. Questions? I'm wondering um, the, the quarterback situation in particular when, when and we're not going to be talking about the transfer situations, but when you have a guy right now that you, you kind of identify as, as a number one, how difficult is it to maybe try and either from the portal or the high school ranks go after someone, particularly in the situation that you guys are in with nobody left in that room? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we did. We had at one point in time no one on scholarship in that room. And so I almost wanted to put that uh, perspective as actually a great opportunity to recruit, right? You're trying to draw quarterbacks at that position. And when there's no one in currently in the room, that's attractive to, to players. Obviously, yes, we are going to be uh, adding through the transfer portal. And a lot of that becomes public and, and things. And so that was that's a key piece of that position. Really excited about the two guys. They were adding with Alessio and Rylan. Rylan, we've no longer. We've been recruiting Rylan for a long time. Alessio, uh, Coach Langer got out to the school and the house, got to, to meet him and the family. They were on visits, uh, good people. And we feel both of those guys can play at a high level. And both of them will be here in January. I want to go back to the three week stretch here and what kind of a run that was. I mean, you're trying to hire a staff, as you said, you're probably getting there, or your secretaries, you're trying to find a house, you have all this to do at such an important recruiting time. What kind of a challenge has this been? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a challenge that we were diving into and, and navigating, doing our best. Again, it started with the idea that you're trying to recruit and retain your current roster, so not completely detaching from those guys. Spoke to the team that way. It wasn't going to just go to a a day and run through eight different high schools when the opportunity there's good players here and making sure that those guys 
uh, at least hear the vision and feel comfortable with that. Uh, and then, yes, you're trying to add to the roster through the recruiting thing. On the hiring piece, it was going to be delivered on that. Um, and again, it's about the fit, obviously, you know, expertise with the type of man that you're going to you know, add to the staff. And so that was part of that process all in this last three weeks. And you knew that you were going to have some attrition after that meeting from people who chose to left here. Did, did, did you just have to kind of accept that as, as part of the job? Yeah, we, we understood the situation that, uh, you know, those guys had been through previously, and that's the landscape now in college football. They can go and explore options. Uh, I think it was painted pretty clear to him, you know, if you're going to go in the portal, it's my my responsibility to actively work to replace them. And so we continue to recruit some of them, some have come back. At the same time, I, we're working to replace them. I think we've done a good job. Yeah. Good job, we're here. I was wondering, you, you inherited some commits, and then obviously there are guys that you recruited previously to Oregon State. I guess, how did you blend those two, and is there a common denominator in, in what you, and your guys kind of sold them for, yeah, with yeah we, I think we blended it really well. Uh, yes, there were current guys that were committed to the place before we arrived. We tried to dive into those guys and you know, again, communicate the vision, obviously evaluate, make sure the fit is right on both sides, which it really was with these guys that can play. Um, at the same time, we had some deep-rooted relationships with previous players that were committed elsewhere that I think a lot of this in recruiting is about the relationship they had felt felt good, got them out here on campus to make sure they see in the environment and land in a good place with those guys. What's it like when you're trying to recruit somebody to the West Coast and then all of a sudden from Hawaii they're going to yeah. Lansing in December? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a different location that, that you recruit to, uh, but there's a lot to sell here. And, and what attracted me to the job was similar to what attracted these, these recruits. Jonathan, over here, I've got two for you. One, uh, the, um, when you, you come in, and there's a list of previous commits, and there's sort of a blueprint for how the previous staff is going about it. How much communication did you have with them, uh, with Harlan, and, and sort of in, in then putting together your own attack and approach for it? And, and that's uh, part of that is, is there a role for Harlan? What's going on with Harlan? Is he going to be part of your your staff? Right. We did use the There's a lot of people still in the building that have been here previously, and so getting background information of what, you know, learning about the partic uh, particular recruit. Um, a lot of what previously was sold Michigan Statewide is still here. You talk about the ed education the facility, the, the conference, the people around the place, all of that. So that was pretty consistent. On Harlan's end, he's been helpful as well. Mo uh, met with him now a couple of times, just given the landscape, his approach, um, yet to be determined on Harlan. Um, he's got opportunities to other options and things, and so we'll, we'll see where that lands. The other question I have is with, with NIL, which is obviously a huge part of everything, um, and you had a, a, a system and a, a, an approach at, at Oregon State, and I'm wondering if you brought that here and if you could sort of share your approach and philosophy with, with NIL. In regards to NIL, I think the resources around here, the opportunities are uh, really good. And I've learned more and more being here three weeks on, on what that all is. Uh, again, we, we had approaches at Oregon State that are going to be similar here and not just in the NIL space, offense, defense, schematically, how we evaluate, how we uh, you know, develop players around here. And so there'll be some similarities. I wanted to ask you about Ohio. Uh, obviously, it's a big secondary recruiting territory for Michigan State for a lot of years. Talking to Austin Clay's coach last night, he said that they're excited that Michigan State's back in Ohio and that, that you guys are actively involved with high school coaches again in that area. What, what is your reception been like? Yeah, that is a, a big area. There's a lot of good players. There's a lot of good high school coaches. And again, I'm not trying to claim like I'm the expert yet, but our intention will be to again, use these months of January, getting around those high school coaches, because uh, there's players there. Uh, we want to make some inroads in three weeks in these hotbeds of uh, locations where players are. Hard. This state, Ohio, within driving distance, gives us a little time when we're going to get there. You mentioned the first day you were able to go out and recruit you signed Nick Marsh. I'm just curious, what stood out about him as a person and, and a player as well? Yeah, from the get-go, you talk about a, a good young man. I mean, humble, talked about his teammates, uh, well-spoken. Uh, you know, really loved Michigan State for, for a while now, getting to know him, kind of what he values. He helped us recruit at the same time, so he's been a great teammate that way. Met mom, Mama Tron as well, and she's been helpful in the recruiting process as well. When it comes to 
like you mentioned, having to like pitch your vision to a lot of these recruits and the current roster and stuff. And we talked a little bit at your introductory press conference about what that is. Um, but when there's like a new coach coming in and a new staff, sometimes there's uncertainty about what what can happen with the program. Sure. Um, so I guess what, how has the vision maybe solidified since you've, over the last three weeks? Like what is your selling pitch and kind of what has been the reception from some of the recruits? You know, I think it's uncertainty, but also opportunity. I think the you know, opportunity is kind of fresh start. Um, you know, we've got a proven track record of, of doing things a certain way. I think Michigan State, again, sells itself with so much beyond just the, you know, the facility upgrades have been phenomenal when you get these guys on campus, the educational opportunities, the academic support, the support from a fan base that is passionate. So there's a lot to sell uh, in regards to opportunity. John from the front here again. I know you said TBD on, uh, on Harlan, whether he'll be part of the staff, but with the two openings you have, do you know which direction you plan to go? Because it looks like you might be filled out offensively, but you know, just. Yeah, kind of fluid on those last two spots. You know, kind of just thinking through again, getting Coach Rossi over here in regards to some of his vision to finalize the defensive side. Obviously, he's got to answer the special team side as well. So we'll kind of see. I was not going to rush on those decisions. I'm going to make sure, again, the particular person, the fit, and the fit on both sides. Um, and then the current setup of finalizing defense and answering for special teams. Uh, we'll, we're sorting that out. John, right here. Uh, you mentioned the other day at your press conference about diving in and learning the history of the program. I'm wondering how much you're able to catch up on the Michigan State's history with Hawaii and Hawaiian players. And uh, how much you were able to learn and how much do you think that maybe helped in landing the two guys? You yeah, I've learned a little. Yeah, there's a history there um, on that end, and so that helped uh, to extend both the you know, players coming over from Hawaii. We've known deeply now for a long time, uh, make it physical at the line of scrimmage. And so we'd love to, again, we're all into the diversity, love to start inside out location wise, but we're going to go where we, we need to, to find players. Was it something they were aware of? Uh, just being being mayors out there that um, Michigan State. You know what? I I don't know for certain okay. if they were aware or not. Yeah, I wonder about the two running backs that you brought in. Obviously, guys that you knew and, and were familiar with. Um, how are their styles different and similar? And it, it, the second part of that is a, a, a guy like uh, Frazier seems like he can play some linebacker. But you need him too as well. Do you have other guys that you kind of want to see? In the, as, and I think there's a couple guys in the class that could go either direction right, if you want them to. Well, we, we love running backs that have some versatility. Both Brandon and Kai have some physicality to them. Um, and so those that stands out that they're similar. Again, good high school players, especially running backs, should have the capabilities of playing some defense at the high school level. But currently, the plan is them to, to carry them. Uh, when you were selling the, especially the recruits on the West Coast, um, you know, to MSU, how much did you pitch the idea that you guys were kind of going to, would be coming in kind of on the ground floor together, that you're, and this was going to be a learning process for everyone involved? How much was that a, you know, convincing pitch to some Well, yeah, it, it was, but at some point, you just, especially the guys that are arriving in January, they're on the ground level of learning schemes in all three phases, right? Offense, defense, and special teams, everyone in the locker room starting at the same level there, so the opportunity for that. Again, I think it's something to be cool with about building something. And again, we're not going to sit here overly patient. We're trying to build something quick and be really, really competitive this fall. Um, but the opportunity to come on the ground level is part of the recruiting pitch. You've uh, featured the tight end position in the past. Can you talk a little bit about why it hook and what you saw about him initially, what, it, what attracted him, what attracted you to him in that process? Yeah, why we've known for a, for a while makes it physical, but is athletic and catch the ball size wise. It looks you know, in what we're looking for in length, weight, uh, you know, height, all of that. And so, yeah, the background we've had offensively, at the tight end spot, we feel like he's a perfect fit. And when you've got some players that come in and look at Michigan State, what were their reactions to it? Uh, they were excited about it. Again, we talked to, you know, knowing these guys for a while and then coming over, seeing the facility piece. They knew the people for the most part, but just the environment, the location, the stadium, uh, learning more about the school. The academic support is phenomenal around here. And so they, uh, they responded really well. John, when you got here, you said you hadn't even had a chance to walk around campus yet, I guess. Obviously, everything else you've been doing, if you had a chance to kind of get out, see you had a couple basketball games, 
think uh, what's that been yeah. like over the last couple of weeks? That's been fun. The basketball games, hockey game, that's been fun. I plan on getting to more and more when it somewhat slows down uh, for me. So it's been, again, I want to thank, again, the welcome that the people around here have been, not just to me, the family, the staff as well. Um, so I'm anxious to get to more and more events, and I haven't gotten to all the campus yet to be able to get that done. Also, with the Monieski twins, they were already committed earlier. As you've gotten to know them, what have been your impressions? And when you look at them on film, what do you think? Yeah, uh, physical, uh, athletic, uh, at the line of scrimmage, both of them great personalities. Uh, you know, they're tied at the hip, but they also were a part of helping us recruit. You know, been there with this place for a long time, getting to know them on a personal level. I'm excited about them joining us. I know you dropped the puck. I don't know how long you stayed. How did you enjoy your first ice hockey game? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I wish I could have. I was meeting a lot of people during the game, uh, but I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, the student section's back, the energy in the place, the physicality. I hadn't been to a hockey game in like 20 years, so I'm definitely going back. I, on recruiting, there's a perception out there really perceived that it's not about high school recruiting anymore. It's about how you manage the portal. You made it clear at your introductory press conference and again today, that high school recruiting is still important. That's a priority to you? Yeah, 100%. We want to be a place of development. The longer you have a player to develop, the better and better he's going to get. Well, I'm not saying we're going to be exclusive just to, to the high school ranks, but uh, managing your roster, you can add through high school, yes, through the portal, um, develop walk-ons, a place of development. So we do want to be still core about uh, high school, not exclusive to the core being, being from that, that age. It's been pretty obvious. You mentioned about some of the young guys, the, the, the recruits who are helping to recruit. What about the guys on this, on the roster right now? So like Kent is a guy that's really been active. Who else has been trying to yeah. help him? I think Sam was a huge part as well. He's got some influence. You know, when, when, especially the first weekend we had visitors, the current players were, were helping. That's a huge benefit. I think one of the biggest pieces in recruiting is your current roster. They can you know, keep it real on their experience of how it's going. And so I appreciate the guys giving effort, uh, not just when they're on campus, but you know, on social and things like that. Do you, the, the calendar as it stands now, is it fair <laughs> to, to you, to a new staff, to the players who are trying to make decisions? To a, you've got to be on the road now, or would be better when it was in February and you got to grind for January? Like, yeah, I, it, I don't know if there, it's not ideal, I know that. And that's not just specific to our, our setup here at Michigan State here in three weeks. I just think there is a lot going on in one month in regards to coaching changes, the portal being open really throughout the month, early signing date, people making decisions on early signing date when the portal's still open. Um, there seems like there's a better avenue recipe calendar-wise. I'm not saying I know it, but there's just a lot going on this month. On that, is there a, a, an available? Do you think a preseason, like an August signing day? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's ramifications. I can start. You know, you go to August. And, you know, that early signing day is that going to affect high school players? Are they going to continue to play their high school senior year? Are they opting out when they already got their scholarship? And so there's a lot to consider there. You know, uh, oftentimes the guys are making their decisions earlier. So if now you're back and waiting all the way just to February, there's ramifications there. Not a simple solution. Um, I'll just go back to there. There's a lot going on in December. John, from here again. I was wondering, with uh, I think a half a dozen early enrollees so far, and you mentioned some of the transfers probably do too. How important is that to get these guys on campus, especially the ones that you're not familiar with, as far as having played, having played for you at Oregon State, to learn the system that obviously the guys are turning. Yeah, it's huge. Anytime you can start as fast as possible, so the guys that are arriving in January getting acclimated, getting into the weight room. Obviously, learning their side of the ball schematics wise, uh, learning their teammates. So it's huge to have a good number. We'll have a good number of them here in January. And then with the guys, you still have, there are a number of guys still in the portal. Do you anticipate retaining some of these guys that are out there looking at in? Yeah, uh, to be determined. We're, we're definitely aggressively trying to retain a few, not all, but a few. And we'll, again, in this day and age, they've got that option. Um, but we will, we'll see where that lands. The first year, do you feel like you have to sell yourself individually more so than the program and, and convincing recruits to come maybe versus when you're you know two or three years into it, right. you can sell more of the, the program itself? That's a, that's a good question. You know, uh, 
probably 50 50 in regards to yeah you get to sell yourself a vision of what what you want this thing to look like the longer it goes you've got the background of being in the program and, and they've got an idea of what the identity is um, i still go back to this place there's a lot to sell about michigan state michigan football fan base athletics in general um, so about 50 50. so when you set out to put this class together three weeks ago daunting task big challenge is it about what you expected or did it exceed what you expected? How did it all come Right. <laughs> it probably exceeds right now. I'm thinking about that first week on what we had to <laughs> undertake here. Uh, but I'll, I'll go back to we are not done. I mean, this thing is a start. We're really excited about where we started. But you can add to your roster over the next six, eight months, and we plan to do it. You said at your introductory press conference you wanted to utilize the February signing period also. Yeah. Do you anticipate? some decent talent out there? Somewhere? I think there will be, and we're going to you know, uncover rocks and dig into it and, and, and that kind of thing. So we'll see. I don't anticipate anticipate being this big, this many numbers, but we're uh, definitely looking. Any specific positions for February that are still? Still sort that out. You know, again, we'll get into how this portal closes and see where we're at, and, and we'll be able to identify our needs from there. And one more thing about the quarterbacks, Milo Vojevic and um, Riley and Ryan, Jesse, yeah. your thoughts about those two as prospects? Yep, um, again, Rylan, we've known for a long period of time. Uh, athletic can throw it. We've seen him a couple of times. We were chasing him at Oregon State for a while. Built a relationship, football family, good football there. Lesio, get to know him over the last two weeks. On tape, this guy can make throws down the field, which we want to be able to do in the offense. I think the guy is a football nut, uh, studies it, knows it inside and out. Great family when they're here for the weekend. So really excited about both of them. Jonathan, I'm wondering, going on quarterbacks, as a quarterback guy, I'm wondering, do you have a sort of a rigid framework or traits and things that you like in that position, or can they come in all shapes and sizes and, and different right. things? Right. Uh, they can come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, size does help. Um, I kind of try to simplify it down to this. We're, we're looking for a shortstop in regards to a skill set. Movement-wise, can make plays in the hole, but make, still make that big-time throw. We're not looking for a, a third baseman overly, um, but they got to be able to play that side of the field and, and throw. I also wanted to ask you about Courtney Hawkins, who retained him since we talked to you. Uh, what, what went into that decision? Obviously, a guy who knows this place and area. Uh, yep. And what's he, what's he meant to your staff at this point? Enjoyed, so, yeah, enjoyed getting to know him. Uh, deeply passionate about this place. Uh, got some track record playing this game at the highest level, developing talent. Love the idea that he spent some time at the high school ranks and what he did for that school and that community. Learning that story was uh, was really uh, you know, fun and impressive to hear. So really excited he's, a, he's on board. I know you've had a lot going on this, maybe looking too far ahead, but coaches do spring ball different ways. Do you have a spring calendar yet, or is it too early? Not, yeah, not defined. Uh, targeted around starting mid, mid March and, and go from there. You hope to have a spring game, or don't you know yet? Uh, don't know yet. We'll see what this roster looks like and all of that, but uh, we definitely got some work to do in spring and looking forward to that. I think we'll wrap it up here. Uh, I talked to Mike Riley last week, and he kind of said the best advice he would be able to give is just knowing that you have to build it at your own rate. I know you mentioned you want to be competitive this fall, but how do you balance, you know, having the pressure to rebuild this program quickly and be competitive, but also knowing that it's going to take some time to you know, implement your strat, your scheme, implement your culture and everything? You know, I think we want to be consistent. And again, we're going to aggressively attack to develop and we buy through development. These guys play the best football they can. And, uh, I'm excited about the opportunities this roster, what it will look like come this summer. Confident that we'll put a really competitive product out there. And not overly patient in regards to not, you know, we're not just casually going into a mindset of like, okay, year three, we gotta get this thing going. Uh, but we want to be consistent in our approach. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.